What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and happy new years. I'm super stoked to be able to bring you guys some awesome content this year. I got so much cool stuff planned. You guys don't even know. I just can't wait to share it with you. Hey, but for those of you that are new to the channel, let me go ahead and introduce myself real quick. My name is Dakota and I'm a portrait photographer based out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I can proudly say that I've transitioned over to film photography mostly for the past eight months and will continue going forward with a lot of film content on the channel. So if you enjoy that and also want to learn more about film, see the different reviews on film stocks, BTS from photo shoots, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And for those of you that have been rocking with me since day one, thank you so much. We got some amazing things coming this year. And you can already tell my lighting setup is a little bit different. We're gonna get it perfect to how I wanna see it. Uh, but yeah, we got, some, we got some different stuff. We switching it up this year, man. I'm super excited. So let's go ahead and jump into what today's video is gonna be about. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about Delta 3200. We've used Delta 3200 before on the channel, but this time we're going to be experimenting a little bit more with this film stock, but at night. One thing that I learned throughout my first eight months of shooting film is that you can rate all sorts of films at different ISOs to get various results, okay? So for example, Delta 3200 is actually rated at 1000, but it means it'd be pushed and really get good exposure latitude between 400 and 6400 ISO. Um, and I decided I wanted to put this to the test to see what type of images I can get with this film at night. So for today's video, I have three different tests for you guys. One, shooting this at 1000 ISO, another shooting it at 1600, as well as the last one shooting it at 3200 ISO at night to see what type of results that we're gonna end up getting with this film stock. The winters in the Midwest aren't very forgiving, so going outside at the dead of night to shoot some film is not all that great in December, January weather, but we made it work anyways. We worked with Taylor for this specific shoot, so go ahead and give this video a like as well to push it through the YouTube algorithm, but as well so we can go outside and freeze again while shooting other various film stocks at night during the winter. So just reiterating for some of my previous videos, whenever you're shooting at night, you want to find any sort of light source that'll help illuminate your photos. I don't care what type of ISO speed that the box of your film is saying. Even when you're shooting with digital, you always want to make sure that you're finding some sort of light source at night so that there's some sort of way to illuminate your photos. Uh, film isn't as forgiving as digitals, right? Because you can go in and depending on what type of camera you have, say like an A7R5, right and you're going in and uh you shoot in maybe complete darkness but because you can go in and recover shadows and whatnot super deep in a 60 megapixel camera you could do a lot with that image it's not the same with film so you want to make sure you really get your stuff right in setting uh, on the camera and also at your scene to get the best results possible so for these 1000 ISO rated images, I wanted to make sure that we found an area that was nicely lit. So we found an alleyway contrary to popular belief, this alleyway was very well lit. So we wanted to put Taylor in a position where she was illuminated to get some okay images, but as well as create like that nice moody uh, shadow contrast, the effect within these shots. And I do think for a lot of these outdoor shots, I did achieve that specific look. Um, in some of these images, I wish it would have been a little bit more light. I could have posed her closer to some of those like street light sources that were above her head. There is one image that came out just perfect in my opinion, and I'm showing this one on the screen right now. Uh, this one's just beautiful overall. Like there's that nice, like just punchy, uh, shadowy flavor to the image, but as well as she's well lit, um, where you can kind of see the details of everything that's going on. And I like this one a lot. Some of these ones, especially if her walking looked like something out of an old, like a 70s movie, black and white 70s film. And I do think that's really cool. Um, it has that high grain with your images. The lower the ISO, the less grain. So I can tell that the grain inside of the 1000 rated ISO photos are a lot less than the ones rated at 1,632. And I'll compare some on the screen as we go deeper into the video. But yes, uh, overall, I did enjoy shooting this at 1,000. Um, I was supposed to, in all honesty, push these ones outside two stops to see what I would get rating this at 1,000 and then pushing to 32. Fun fact, the images that you saw at the very beginning of the video were rated at 1,000 and pushed two stops while shooting indoors. I was supposed to, like I mentioned, mark this roll to be shot outdoors, but I accidentally marked the indoor roll. 
uh, that I shot at a thousand as well and pushed two stops. Um, it is what it is. So you can see again, some of the differences. Uh, there's a lot less grain that is prominent in ISO 1000 images versus the um, ones rated at 1632. But overall, you still get that nice, healthy amount of grain in your images. And one of the big reasons I got into film was that vintage nostalgic look, but as well as that film grain that was associated with the images and Delta 3200 definitely, definitely produces. So continuing on with our experiment, we shot this next roll at ISO 1600 and got it developed that way. In all honesty, I do really enjoy these images that have a nice like rich silver gray tone to the um, to our skin tone and everything, that nice beautiful look that you look for with your black and white images. Again, the grain is a little bit more than shooting at 1600. Uh, I'll show a picture of 16 and 1000 on the screen. Uh, they still look really good. I do like how deep the blacks are. A couple of the images addressed, in my opinion, does look a little bit too like black too, it's too deep, but uh, I could have went in and probably raised the shadows a tad bit to try to um, counteract that. But again, these are cool. Um, I do, again, like like I mentioned, that silver tone uh, gives that 70 movies feel and the grain is just oh so beautiful. If you're new to the channel, you're going to soon find out that I love film grain in my images. I purposely shoot with higher ISO film just so I can get that nice grain look. So Portrait 800, um, any sort of black and white film that is high ISO. Oh, and Cine Steel BWXX because even though it is a 200 to 250 ISO film, that stuff produces some amazingly awesome film grain. And last but not least, we have our last roll of Ilford Delta 3200 and that is shot right at box speed of 3200. So of course, this last box, like I've been mentioning throughout the video is going to have the highest amount of grain because again the higher iso that you go and film or digital the more grain or noise that you'll get on your images and but it's done so well with ilford delta 3200 the grain is just so beautifully like just it renders so nicely within the image and i really think the images that you see on the screen it complements um taylor again i feel that film grain adds a sense of realism to your images um, and that's why I started implementing that in a lot of my digital shots. And I'm really glad that, again, now that I'm actually into film, that I can get that natural film uh, grain look with these shots. My favorite from this 3200 ISO set is probably the one of Taylor sitting on the bench and looking directly at me. Just everything about this photo screams just old black and white look, okay? Um, there's those beautiful bokeh balls from the light in the background from shooting at f2.8 uh, with my Mamiya uh, 110 f 2.8 lens um, the, the silver tones look really awesome the film grain complements the image very nicely um, her iris everything on her eyes are just in perfect focus so you can actually see details and everything just this picture is phenomenal to me uh, which is why it's a part of my thumbnail for the video but I think this one is my absolute favorite In conclusion, all of these images, no matter what they're rated at, look pretty good. It just depends on what look you're going for, okay? I do implore my new film shooters, after you learn the basics, go out and shoot like whatever film stock you're using at various ISOs to see what type of images you can get. Just because it says on a box what you should shoot it at, yeah, that may be for best results, but you may never know. You might like the look when you're shooting it at a different uh, speed, right? A different ISO speed. So give it a shot according to the internet because the internet's never wrong, right? You can shoot this at 400. I probably wouldn't do that outside at night though. Um, so that'll be a daytime experience or an in-studio experience one day here. You guys let me know in the comments what you thought of each photo set at the various ISOs, whether you like the 1000, whether you like the 16, or whether you like 3200. Just let me know what you think of the images. Also let me know what you think of Ilford Delta 3200 at the film stock in general. I honestly am going to probably be shooting black and white film a lot uh, because like you guys know if you've been on the channel and if you haven't, you now know that I love black and white images and I really want to get super good at shooting film, black and white film in particular, because once you take out the color nonsense, uh, out the equation, right? You get some really awesome detail, like just timeless shots. And that's what I want to capture 
with uh, black and white. So we're gonna give it a shot. Thank you so much for watching the first video of 2023. I greatly appreciate it. Hey, if you are not subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming content similar to this. But guys, make sure that you are smashing the hell out of that like button. That's all I ask for. We're gonna try to push these videos through the algorithm this year, uh, get our videos pushed out to new people so they can also see some of the cool things we do on the channel. So make sure you smash that like button. Thank you guys so much. Have a happy new year. Be productive, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.